after the leper falls at his feet and worships him, saying, Lord, if you are willing, you can make me clean. God, how beautiful is that, man? Wow. And then he heals the centurion servant, the centurion, the Roman centurion. I love this man. He said, I've heard about you, Lord, and I have a sick servant. Actually, some translations say, my son is at home sick. And I ask that you would heal him. And Jesus says, I'll come to your house. <laughs> Jesus offered to go to the centurion's house, which is, you know, totally against all the Jewish regulations. And the centurion said astonishing words to Jesus. He said, Lord, I'm not worthy for you to come under my roof. Just speak the word and my servant will be healed. Let's stay on it for a minute before we worship together. The centurion looked at Jesus, wow, and said, Jesus, I'm not worthy for you to come under my roof. I want to weep. He said, all that's needed and is necessary is for you to speak the word and my servant will be healed. For I'm a man under authority and I, in my centurion place, I tell people to go do this and they do it. I tell people to go do that and they do it. So you have authority. Jesus of Nazareth has the authority to heal sick people and he gave it to us. Ha! So today will be Matthew 8 in a few minutes. Cleansing the leper whoosh, and healing the centurion servant. Today's song, of course, is Do It Again. I've seen you move, you move the mountains, and I believe I see you do it again. You make a way where there is no way, and I believe. I see you do it again. We'll see you do it again. I know you do it again. Yeah, Jesus. Walls of Jericho. He said, Why don't you do seven times around and the walls will come down? Right, Lord. Like only Joshua. <laughs> And a few other people would even believe the word of the Lord seven times. Right. These are battalion walls. They're battle walls. Because <laughs> the first lyric is walking around these walls. I thought by now they'd fall. You've got storms. Some darkness which Jesus will knock out. You have circumstances. You've been walking around these walls, and I thought by now they'd fall. Walking around these walls, I thought by now they'd fall. But you have never failed me yet. And waiting for change to come. Knowing the battles won, for you have never failed me yet. Do it again and learn it with me today. And walking around these walls, I thought by now they'd fall, but you have never failed me. Yet. 
and waiting for change to come and knowing the battles won for you have never failed me yet check it now your promise still stands great is your faithfulness your faithfulness I'm still in your hands this is my confidence you've never failed me your promise still stands great is your faithfulness Lord faithfulness yeah. I'm still in this is my confidence you've never failed me yet you've never failed me yet and you never will lord i know this night won't last your word will come to pass my heart will sing your praise again and Jesus you're still enough wow keep me within your love my heart will sing your praise again and again again and again and i know this storm won't last your word will come to pass my heart will sing your praise over and over and over again because yeah, jesus jesus you're still enough me within your love and my heart will sing your praise again your promise still stands great is your faithfulness your faithfulness is my life still in your hand this is my confidence you've never failed me your promise still stands great is your faithfulness your faithfulness I'm still in your hand this is my confidence you've never failed me yeah. you never failed You never fail. It's not in your nature. It's not in your person. You never, ever, ever fail. It's not in your person. It's not in your nature, Lord. You never, come on, tell them today. You never, ever fail, Lord. Yeah. Never, ever. I will never forsake you to the end of this age, to the end of this time. Yeah, I will never leave you, Carla. I will never forsake you, even to the end of this age, to the end of time as we understand it. Insert your name. I will not leave you. I will not forsake you until the very end of this age or the end. I will never leave you. God, these are the words of Jesus. I will never leave you, says the Lord. I will never forsake you, said Jesus. 
he said it at the end of one of the gospels and there it is your faithful faithful just rest in his love rest in his loving kindness This night won't last. Your word will come to pass. My heart will sing your praise again and again. Jesus, you're still enough. Keep me within your love. My heart will sing your praise again. Your promise still stands. Great is your faithfulness, faithfulness. I'm still in your hands. This is my confidence. You've never failed me here. Your promise still stands. Great is your faithfulness, faithfulness. I'm still in your hands. This is my confidence. You never fail me. And here's that bridge. I've seen you move. You move the mountains, and I believe I see you do it again. You made a way, Lord, where there was no way, and I believe I see you do it again. Seen you move, you move the mountains, and I believe I see you do it again. You made a way. Where there was no way, and I believe I see it do it again. Yeah. I believe I see you do it again. We're gonna see you do the book of Acts again, Lord. I, yeah. I see it do it again. signs and wonders and miracles the outpouring of your holy spirit the outpouring it's here again it's here again yeah. the book of acts continuing on in the power of your holy spirit it won't take very long yeah. the outpouring of your spirit rain Spirit's reign. I'm still looking for that outpouring of your Holy Spirit's reign. Yeah, seeking your face, following hard after you, Lord. Seeking your pour out your spirit. Let there be a visitation of your heart and hand. And there is. Revival in the land, great awakening from your hand. There's revival in this land, says the Lord, says the Lord. Yeah. Pouring out your Holy Spirit rain, and here we are once again, Jesus. One more time, that verse, walking around these walls. Do it again, Lord. Sometimes you're found walking around the walls of Jericho. First time you go, I don't know. Second time, well, Lord, I'm obeying you. <laughs> Third time, I'm still here in faith, Lord. Seven times around Jericho. And sometimes the fourth, you go, Lord, are you sure? The fourth time. <laughs> Fifth, faith returns. <laughs> Six, you're now in the hunt. And seven, 
seventh time around Jericho. These are the miracles and the supernatural events of our God. Somebody say, I get it. Oh my God. And the walls came tumbling down. Battle walls, fortress. So, walking around these walls, I thought by now they'd fall But you have never failed me yet Been, been waiting for a change to come But I know The battle's already won in you For you have never failed me yet I know this night won't last. I know this night won't last. Your word does come to pass. My heart will sing your praise again. And Jesus, you're still enough. Got stuck. Jesus, you're still enough. Jesus, you're still enough. You keep me within your love. For you have never failed me. Because your promise still stands. Your promise still stands. Great is your faithfulness. Your faithfulness. Still in your hands, this is my confidence. You've never failed me. Yeah. You've never ever ever failed me. Yeah. Yeah. I shout hallelujah. You've never failed me, and you never will. You're Almighty God. You never failed. seal it up now in faith walking by faith and not by sight I've seen you move you move the mountains and I believe I see you do it again you made a way where there was no way and I believe I see you do it again I've seen you Wow, I see you do it again. You made a way, Lord, where there was no way. And I believe I see you do it again. Again and again. Ooh. You do it again. servants we honor you in the waiting in the activity in the obedience we look to you and we continue with a devout worshiping heart to you lord of glory yeah yes uh. open your bibles to matthew chapter 8 Two great miracles. I'll never say the greatest because they were all great. But in this chapter, Matthew 8, he cleanses the leper by touching him, by the way, <laughs> which was against all the rules. You become unclean except by Jesus' touch. All of his leprosy was gone. 
And then he heals the centurion servant who says, Jesus, I'm not worthy for you to come under my roof, but just speak the word. Speak the word and my servant will be healed. You see, I'm a man under authority. I tell people to go and they go. I tell them to come and they come. And I know if you just speak the word. And Jesus did. And the centurion servant was healed in the self same hour. The King James self same immediately. <laughs> so here we go. Why don't you look at verse uh, at chapter seven? Because I'm going to read the last two verses to get us ready to set the stage for these 12 verses in Matthew 8. Matthew 7, 28, and so it was, what? And so it was, this is way beyond Star Trek, live long and prosper, and so it was because of Jesus. When Jesus had ended these sayings, the people were astonished at his teaching. I love that word. For he taught them as one having authority. Here we are again. A lot of the prophetic people right now are saying the same thing. Walk in your authority. Julie Green, Amanda Grace, Robin and his wife, they're saying, start walking in the authority God gave you, gave us. See, Jesus was teaching as one having authority and not as the scribes who really didn't know what they were talking about. By the time finished, Jesus finished speaking. The crowds were dazed and overwhelmed. Stop right there for a minute. They were dazed and overwhelmed by his teaching. It was rocking their heart and their mind. The passion says they were awestruck and astonished. Of course they were. They were visually seeing the Lamb of God operating in the power of the Holy Spirit. Wow. Because Jesus' words carried great authority, quite unlike the religious scholars, the experts of the law so-called. Hear it again. By the time Jesus finished speaking, this is the end of chapter 7, preparing us for chapter 8 of Matthew, the people were dazed and overwhelmed by Jesus' teaching. They were awestruck and astonished because his words carried such great authority. Quite unlike the religious scholars, experts of the law. Carla, pray us in Matthew 8, starting at verse 1. Son of God. Jesus. Yeah, we had a couple of technical Where things we had to do. Matthew yeah. chapter 8. God, we just want to see miracles again, Lord like you performed when you walked on the earth. We have exhausted every alternative in this world to your miracles that you bestowed up upon people through your compassion. There are still incurable diseases and there are still people that they don't have access to medical, them, anything medical, any medical community that could possibly help them. And even, even at that, the whole medical industry has its limitations. So Father, just help us to enter in again. Give us faith, build our faith as we read these testimonies of what Jesus did when he walked on the earth and then turned around and told his disciples, go and do the same thing, and then turned around and told the church, 
I give you the authority to yes. do the same thing. So help us to understand that in a better way today, Father, as we approach your word. In Jesus' name, Matthew 8, chapter 1. When he had come down from the mountain, great multitudes followed him. Behold, a leper came and worshipped Jesus, saying, Lord, if you are willing, you can make me clean. God, yes. When Jesus came down from the mountain, great throngs followed him. And behold, a leper came up to him and prostrating himself, worshipped him, God. saying, Lord, if you are willing, you are able to cleanse me by curing me. Upon descending from the hill country, a leper coming near, wow. coming near began to bow down to him, fell on his knees before Jesus, saying, Master, if only you are willing, you can cleanse me. Man. Large crowds followed Jesus as he came down from the hillside. Look, a leper is approaching. He kneels before him, worshiping. Sir, the leopard pleads, if you want to, you can heal me. And the Passion says, after he came down from teaching on the hillside, massive crowds began following him. Suddenly a leper walked up to Jesus, threw himself down before him in worship, in worship, yeah. and said, Lord, you have the power to heal me if you really want to. So stay right there, verses 1 and 2. Here it is, suddenly a leper. Suddenly this leper walked up to Jesus and threw himself down, worshiping. He was worshiping. Yeah. Suddenly this leper walked up to Jesus and bowed himself down. He was worshiping, worshiping. Lord, you have the power to heal me. Lord, you have the power to heal me. If you really want to, you have the power to heal me. I worship you. He threw himself down. How beautiful is this? He fell on his knees before Jesus. A leper came very near. A leper came very near. Fought, fell on his knees before Jesus. Master, if only you're willing, you can cleanse me. Master, if you're only willing, you can cleanse me. And a leper coming near, the crowd dispersed. No way. His clothes were tattered. A leper was not supposed to come near to anybody. It was against the law. Verse 3. We'll go slow. Then Jesus put out his hand and touched him. Oh, my Jesus put out his hand and touched the leper. You, you're unclean. But he said, I'm willing. Be cleansed. And immediately, his leprosy was cleansed. New King James says, Then Jesus put out his hand and touched him, kneeling before Jesus, saying, I am willing. Make sure you mark this verse 3. He's always willing. He said, be cleansed. And immediately, his leprosy was cleansed. I mean, people beheld it with their own eyes. His skin went from porous and sores and falling apart. He was healed immediately. Everybody knew they saw it with their own eyes. The voice says, Jesus stretching out his hand, of course I will. 
I wish to be healed, be made clean. Immediately, this man was healed of his leprosy. Jesus stretched out his hand and placed it on the leper. Just uh, thank you, Lord. No fear. He, He wasn't reticent. He said, I am willing. Check this out. It says, be clean again as you originally were before you had leprosy because Jesus jumped the whole system. (laughs) He said, be clean again, Mr. Leper. And instantly, his leprosy was cleansed. Just, Just take a minute. You gotta let it sink in. And he's still doing it today. For those that will believe and those that will actually pray, at the altar, at the quick shop, at work, on the parking lot. If you'll pray, Jesus will still heal people. Thanks be to God. Okay, last one, the passion on verse 3. Jesus reached out his hand and touched the leper and said, of course I want to heal you. Be healed. And instantly... All signs of leprosy disappeared. Woo! He said, of course I want to heal you. Be healed. And instantly all signs of leprosy disappeared. And here's the note from the Passion. For Jesus to touch a leper was to render him ceremonially unclean. It's either 7 or 14 days. But Jesus wasn't defiled by touching the leper. Instead, the leper was healed because Jesus touched him. He's still touching people today. I think of that old school song, our first pastor, uh, and it was quite a little chorus. I think it was out of the uh, the Catholic community. Maybe, maybe it wasn't. But Jesus is passing by. Jesus is passing by. He passed by. The leper sought him out, kneeled, knelt, and worshiped him, and he was healed. Verse 4, Carla. And Jesus said to him, See that you tell no one, but go your way. Show yourself to the priest and offer the gift that Moses commanded. It is as a testimony to them. Jesus said, don't tell anyone what just happened. Rather go to the priest, (laughs) show yourself to him, and give a wave offering as Moses commanded. Your actions will tell the story of what happened here today. Portions of the the offering were, were literally waved in the air before the Lord. Right. The wave offering is first seen in Exodus 29, 19 through 28. In the ordination ceremony of Aaron and his sons, the only instance where part of the wave offering was consumed by fire, the remainder was waved to God. Wow. Other instances of wave offerings, a lamb from the cleansing sacrifice of a healed leper, in Leviticus 14.12. The New Living says, now, Jesus said to him, Go now, but tell no one. Let the religious leaders see you. Give the gift in worship. Give the gift in worship that Moses told you to give. This will show them that you have been healed. Go right over to the priest to be examined. Take with you the offering required by Moses' law for lepers who are healed, a public testimony of your cure. And the Passion says, Jesus said to him, Don't speak to anyone, but go at once and find a priest. Then show him what has happened to you. Make sure to take the offering Moses commanded so that they can certify your healing. And just for a minute, I could, 
This used to set me off. I went, Lord, how could he not speak to anyone? He was saying, I want you to do, according to Jewish law, go straight to the temple, get a wave offering, go straight to the temple, report it to the priest. He wasn't saying, don't speak of it any, any time, you know, anywhere. But he's saying, go directly. Take your wave offering. Make sure to take the offering Moses commanded so they can certify your It says certify your healing. Not only that, it was a sign and a wonder to all the scribes, the Pharisees, and the priests in that hour that Messiah had come. Jesus knew exactly how they would, would take it. Take with you the offering required by Moses' law. The wave offering for leopards, leopards who are healed. Take with you the offering required by Moses' law for lepers who are healed. It's a public testimony of your healing. Give your gift, the wave offering in worship. Give your gift in worship. Take your offering in worship. Thanking the Almighty God. Yeah. This is a public testimony of your healing. This is a public testimony of your healing now go your way and go your way you are healing yeah. give the gift of your wave offering in worship said the lord give the gift yeah give your gift the wave offering in worship so that all may see this is a public testimony that you are healed it's a public see the signs and wonders they're a public testimony of who god is and what he still does today i want you to go get your wave offering the gift in presented and with the worshiping heart it's a public testimony testimonies are still real people still believe other people don't miss this point in verse 4 see you take the offering Moses commanded so the priest can certify your healing <laughs> it was for all to heal now the centurion and the centurion's servant. Verse 5. Now when Jesus had entered Capernaum, a centurion came to him. He was pleading with him, saying, Lord, my servant is lying at home paralyzed, dreadfully tormented. If that's not the devil, I don't know what it is. Eventually, Jesus came to the little town of Capernaum. And in Capernaum, a military officer came to him and asked him for help. And the officer said, Lord, I have a servant who is lying at home in agony, paralyzed. And when Jesus arrived in Capernaum, a Roman army captain came and pleaded with him to come to his home and heal his servant boy who was in bed paralyzed and racked with pain. Oh, man. Only the Lord. So when Jesus entered the village of Capernaum, a captain in the Roman army approached him. He asked him for a miracle. That is so cool. He asked him for a miracle. Yeah. And Lord, he said, I have a son who is lying in my home, paralyzed and suffering. 
terribly. Verse 7, Carla. And Jesus said to him, I will come and heal him. The centurion answered and said, Lord, I am not worthy that you should come under my roof, but only speak a word and my servant will be healed. Jesus said, I will come to your house and I will heal him. Oh my God. The officer said, Lord, I don't deserve to have you in my house. And in truth, wow. I know you don't need to be with my servant to heal him. Just say the word, just Woo. say the word and he will be healed. That after all is how authority works. My troops obey me whether I am next to them or not. Similarly, this sickness will obey you. Wow. Yes, Jesus said, I will come and heal him. Then the officer said, Sir, I'm not worthy to have you in my home, and it isn't necessary for you to come. If you will only stand here and say, Be healed, my servant will get well. Oh my God. And the Passion says, Jesus responded, I will go with you and heal him. But the Roman officer interjected, Lord, who am I to have you come into my house? I understand your authority, for I too am a man who walks under authority and have authority over soldiers who serve under me. Lord, I'm not worthy. Just the new King James. Oh, Lord, I'm not worthy. You should come under my roof. Only speak the word, my servant will be healed, Lord. I am not worthy that you should come under my roof, but only speak the word and my servant will be healed. Speak the word and my servant will be healed. Only speak the word. Servant will be healed. Only speak the word. My servant will be healed. Yeah, just say the word. Say the word. The sickness will obey you, Lord. The sickness will obey you, Lord. Just speak the word. Speak the word, and my servant will be. Verse 9, for Jesus, I am also a man under authority, having soldiers underneath me. And I say to this one, go, and he goes, and to another, come, and he comes. And to my servant, do this, and he does it. That, after all, is how authority works. My troops obey me, whether I am next to them or not, similarly, this sickness will obey you. Wow. The centurion, a Roman military officer in charge of about 100 foot soldiers, he knew about authority. 100 foot soldiers? Wow. If you'll only stand here, Lord, and say, be healed, my servant will get well. I know because I am under the authority of my superior officers. And I have authority over my soldiers. And I say to one, go, and he goes. And to another, come, and he comes. And to my slave boy, do this or that, and he does it. And I know you have authority to tell this sickness to go. Hear this again. It's the living Bible. I know you have the authority, Jesus, to tell this sickness to go. And it will, ha it will go. You have authority to tell this sickness to go, and it will go. I can tell one to go, and he'll go. Another to come, and he'll come. I order my servants, and they, they'll do whatever I ask. So I know, I know, K-N-O-W, I know that all you need to do is to stand here and check these words out and command healing over my son. Either a slave boy could have been a bi biological son, a nephew, 
but my son, uh, command healing over my son. He will be instantly healed. So get ready for this, guys. Awesome. So we just saw where Jesus sent the word and healed the centurion servant's son. We have a request that just came in from Sarah Gibson Goswick. She has three friends, Jeff, Cheryl, and Jim, that are all fighting cancer and the effects of chemo. So now we send the word Jesus. of healing. It comes from Jesus Christ, who is the manifestation of God's word in the earth. Yes. And when he was here, he manifested God's word in the earth, and he sent it to the centurion servant. And then he tells the church, he tells us to go and do likewise. So likewise, right now, we send the word of yes. healing to Jeff, Cheryl, and Jim. We Woo! rebuke any cancer that is in their bodies, and we command that their bodies come in line with God's word and they would receive healing in the name of Jesus. And we also pray for Connie, her friend Connie, that she would have a quick recovery from her colon. So Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. Healing, Lord, yes. Verse 10. When Jesus heard it, he marveled, said to those who followed, Assuredly, I say to you, I have not found such great faith, not even in Israel. And I say to you that many will come from east and west and sit down with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob in wow. the kingdom of heaven. But the sons of the kingdom will be cast out into outer darkness. There will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Wow. Jesus was stunned by the depth, depth of the officer's faith. This is the plain truth. I have not met a single person in Israel with as much faith as this officer. It will not be just the children of Abraham and Isaac and Jacob who celebrate at their heavenly banquet at the end of time. No, people will come from the east and the west, and those who recognize me, regardless of their lineage, will sit at my feet at the feast. But those who have feigned their faith will be cast into outer darkness, where people weep and grind their teeth. And the Passion says, Jesus was astonished when he heard this and said to those who were following him, He has greater faith than anyone I've encountered Man, in Israel. Jesus. Listen to what I am about to tell you. Multitudes of non-Jewish people will stream from the east and the west to enter into the banqueting feast with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob in the heavenly kingdom. But many Israelites, wow. born to be heirs of the kingdom, will be turned away and banished into the darkness wow. where there will be bitter weeping and unbearable anguish. And we close with verse 13. So Jesus looked at the centurion and said unto him, Go your way, as you have believed, so let it be done for you. And his servant was healed in the self same hour, meaning immediately the new King James. And I love that old school self same hour. Then Jesus turned to the centurion. You may go home, for it's as you say it is. It is as you believe. And the officer servant was healed right then, right then. Then Yeshua said to the officer, this is a complete Jewish Bible. They use his name Yeshua. Then Yeshua said to the officer, go, let it be for you as you have trusted and as orderly was healed. At that very moment, I want you to catch the phrase, go, let it be to and for you as you have trusted me, as you have trusted, as you have trusted. Then Jesus turned to the Roman officer and said, go home. 
all that you have believed, you believed for will be done for you. Go home. For all that you have believed for will be done for you. And his son was healed at that very moment. How great is our God. How great is our God. How great is our God. Kent, did you see this note on here from John Lambert? It says, thank yeah. you for sharing about the centurion. I now understand what you were praying when I died from COVID and God brought me back to life. <laughs> Is my, that John and Heston? That's yeah. that's my friend John and Heston. <laughs> Woo! Man, bro. That's right. Only speak. We sent the word and we called John back to the house of the Lord to play his trumpet again. <laughs> and I think they had sent him to an aftercare, some kind of place. And I could tell on Friday night, we prayed three days in a row, Friday night, Saturday night, and Sunday morning. And John is alive because we spoke the word, we sent it to his body. <laughs> He's back at church playing his trumpet, getting it on for Jesus. So beautiful, John, thanks. I did see that. I appreciate Carla pointing it out. It's a miracle, <laughs> it's for real. This is who Jesus is. This is the miracles of Jesus, but it's also the words of Jesus. Red letter Bible has the words of Jesus in red letters in print. <laughs> Let's get after it in Jesus' name. We love you guys. We appreciate you praying for us, supporting us financially. There's no way we could do it without you. Me and Carla and Matt, the Three Musketeers, been on for a couple years. We're going forth in the name of Jesus to do this stuff and send it to every tribe, tongue, and nation, everyone that can hear it and listen, and let faith arise in the heart of every man and every woman and teenager. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless. Thank you.